Formula One returns to Sao Paulo once again with the stage set for what promises to be another classic Brazilian Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel famously clinched his third championship here in 2012. And in 2016, Max Verstappen treated us to one of the finest wet weather drives of all time. It's an unusual anti-clockwise race here at Interlagos where the Sao Paulo locals are packed into the grandstands at each of the 15 corners around this classic 2.7 mile circuit. Two very fast sections bookend the famous and highly technical sector two. We're getting a good run out of Jun Sao into one of the two DRS zones will be the key to any overtaking prospects today. It's just about time to go to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tires, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tires. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Perez, Johnson, Daniel Ricciardo and Sainz, Stroll, Verstappen, Fernando Alonso and Charles Leclerc, Giovinazzi, Latifi, George Russell and Sonoda. Ocon, Gasly, Luca Giotto, and Mick Schumacher, Aitken, Schwartzman, Mazepin, and Lando Norris starts from the back of the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys like that lineup as we uh, look at our qualifying here. Um, Q1, we did pretty good. Got uh, P5 in the qualifying for Q1, and then uh, Carlos Sainz had his turn in Q2. We barely made it in to uh, P10, barely made it against the uh, Canadian there. And then Q3, we actually slotted into third place. But uh, Lando Norris had a penalty, and I believe I got a grid penalty for some reason, but I don't remember. It might have been a collision with one of the other races during practice, but uh, a lot of position changes have been made between qualifying and this race, so hopefully you guys enjoy. All right, here we are. Five red lights are off, and we are at a decent start here. Carlos Sainz gains the position against Daniel Ricciardo. Lance Stroll tries to make a move on the inside here. And he actually goes up a few positions into P3 as we try to hold on to position against him. There's a little bit of contact between myself and Lance Stroll as he makes a bold move out of these first few corners as we hold our position in P3. Lewis Hampton, Valtteri Bottas starting to gain a gap. You can see on my time frame there in P3, about a nine tenths of a second behind them. Is uh, rounding up the end of the first lap. It has increased to about 1.3 seconds, almost to a second and a half. Lance Stroll is about 1.2 seconds behind myself as we round out the last uh, turn of the first lap here. Carlos Sainz holding strong in fifth place as we try to do this downhill S curve here pretty well. Still waiting for the DRS, but that's all right. We are in a comfortable position here, trying to get into our uh, rhythm as we move on to uh, lap nine. We're in about eight and a half seconds now behind Lewis Hamilton in P2 as we see Carlos Sainz here in the mirrors moving on the inside. We decide to stay on the inside and give him that space here as he has a better momentum than we do. Carlos Sainz is now taking P3 and hopefully he can close the gap between uh, Unity Racing and Mercedes here as uh, you can see Sergio Perez there behind us lap 10 here now it's basically about us defending against Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen in Red Bull as they even though they are still a ways away from points if they do end up high on the uh, placement for the end of this race they can jeopardize the championship standings moving on to lap 12 here 
on board with Sergio Perez. He is now within a second. We move to the inside of Carlos Sainz, not necessarily to pass him, but to defend to the best of our abilities against your Sergio Perez here. So we're coming around the uh, S curves. Taking that line as wide as we can, holding as best as we can against Sergio Perez. And then uh, trying to hold our DRS with Carlos Sainz here on the main straight, hoping that we have enough good momentum to stay in front of Sergio Perez here as we're swerving over the lane a little bit. I'm surprised I didn't get a warning there, but uh, trying to stay with Carlos Sainz's toe as best as possible here. That way, once we do get DRS, we can hold it. Sergio Perez tries to make the move on the inside. We move on the inside. Holding him back, he loses a little bit of momentum, but he does have DRS on us. We move a little bit towards the inside, a little bit sooner. Trying to stay with Carlos Sainz as best as possible. That way we can get that DRS and the toe on Carlos Sainz on this next straight here. Sergio Perez closing in about, still about a half second behind. And after stepping about 2.5 seconds behind Sergio Perez. He'll be on lap 13. Sergio Perez is still in the hunt for the position as... Valtteri Bottas had actually went into the pits, his first pit stop, moving Carlos Sainz into P2 and myself into P3. Now the gap now being 10 seconds between Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton. And you can see here towards the end of lap 13 as we're coming uphill, we try to get that toe and Carlos Sainz basically tries to, uh, basically it extends the gap here, but it was Sir Sergio Perez close behind us. Carlos Sainz goes into the pits for his new set of tires, leaving us to defend against Sergio Perez all alone. And uh, all the while, Max Verstappen actually goes into the pits as well behind Mercedes. So we'll see later on that Max Verstappen is fighting for a position against Carlos Sainz as Sergio Perez gets the position on us on the inside. On the outside, grass a little bit to slow us down as best as we can. We go a little bit wide to uh, keep our speed up and regain that position against Sergio Perez. Basically trying to hold our position against Sergio Perez until we have to come into the pits for our pit stop. We are coming up towards the beginning of our pit window, but we do, I believe, elect to go on lap 15. I believe it was the end of lap 15. The start of lap 16 was when we go in for pits for mediums. As they do tell us that the rain is on the its way. As we uh, round out the defending against Sergio Perez, as we do notice in the mirrors and on the, uh, the timesheet that Sergio Perez does end up going into the pits here for his new set of tires, leaving a little bit of leeway between myself and Mercedes. Myself going in lap 15, end of lap 15, start of lap 16. Valtteri Bottas was closing in on us, but uh, that's not much of a worry here as Lewis Hamilton, Carlos Sainz about 16 or so seconds behind Mercedes as they are leading the pack of this race. We're about halfway through here. You're gonna hear Carlos Sainz driving on by here. Sergio Perez close behind him, just over a second behind him. Max Verstappen coming bias as well and Antonio Giovinazzi as well I believe Max Verstappen actually went into the pits on this lap I could be wrong as Max Verstappen did go in fact to go into the pits earlier so Max Verstappen and Antonio Giovinazzi are fighting for position there behind us as you can see in the background here as we try to close in on Sergio Perez we're just over a second here Moving on to lap 22, you can definitely see that the rain is coming down. We have regained some positions here. Daniel Ricciardo actually made his way up the grid a little bit. Lap 22 behind Sergio Perez. The RS is still active. Daniel Ricciardo tries to make a move on us. We have a little bit of oversteer because of the rain. Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz decide to go into the pits, so we're going to follow suit. I should have let off the gas a little bit more because we're going to end up double stacking our pit stop so that actually in turn ruins a little bit of my position here as Sergio Perez is out of the pits there and Daniel Ricardo gains a position on us we were in front of him when we came to the pits here 
We do end up coming out in front of Max Verstappen as uh, the rain has changed everyone over to intermediate here on lap 23. See that we are trying to gain, regain our traction and momentum here on lap 23 with these intermediates. Trying to learn our new braking zones as we did not test with the rain. As we uh, try to close in as best possible on Daniel Ricardo uh, in the rain here. Now we did have some trouble with the rain here earlier in the season. I believe it was uh, China. We had a DNF. There was rain, I believe there was, but uh, I could be wrong. Moving on to laps. 27 here make a move on Daniel Ricardo move on the outside we have better traction as we have a little bit more momentum on him cutting the inside of the turn a little bit to gain that upper hand on Daniel Ricardo slotting us into P5 at this time Carlos Sainz still holding a strong P3 against Sergio Perez and with the rain there is no DRS zone active so that's a lifesaver, but it is a lot harder with the no DRS zone to stay in the people's toe in order to get a momentum boost. As you can hear, Gianni Ricardo close behind us as we stay on the inside lane, trying to catch up to Sergio Perez and get his toe as best as possible as we are rounding out the last eight or so laps of this race here. Moving on to lap 30, we actually were checking the weather frequently here every lap. Uh, it seemed like the rain was getting worse and it wasn't going to get better. So we ended up coming in and we're swapping for a set of full wets. Uh, as soon as they told us that we're going to be needing wets as the preferred tire, we went ahead and went in. Hopefully we uh, realized that we were going in before any, everyone else, but as we're coming out, we do realize that we have better traction around the corners with this increasing rain, but it's not increasing at a rate where it would benefit us in any way possible. So that move from P4, P5, losing those positions against Daniel Ricardo, Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso and Charles Leclerc, moving us back down to P9 here. And uh, as we didn't realize it, we tried to Gain as much ground as we could. We can only gain this position against Charles Leclerc on lap 32 here with these wet tires having better control over the corners. Uh, realizing towards the end of the season that our car was definitely better around the corners than it is on the straights here. Moving on to lap 36, I had come to a realization that we were the only car that set to the wet tires for this race. Um, I had thought it over and realized that the decision to change tires was a very bad one and really cost the unity racing points here as Carlos Sainz comes in P3, Bruce Hamilton P2 and Valtteri Bottas P1 for the race win here in Brazil. We've witnessed some great battles around the historic curves of Interlagos today, and they've taken a fantastic win. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. This result narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? It's got to be Lando Norris, hasn't it? Smooth, confident and assured. 
I've got no doubt that he and his team are going to be over the moon with his performance today. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one.